Hey everybody, thanks for tuning into this episode. On this one, I'm going to be calling everybody from the group and having them tell their favorite story of an awesome rut encounter. You know, every year during late October, I feel like as hunters we start thinking about more and more those best hunts that we've ever had, that crazy rut action. You just daydream about it and ultimately you usually get one to three days of good good rut activity even though you have all that time to build it up in your head but i guess to help build that up in my head and your head as well decided to give everybody a call we're all in different locations for the most part aaron and hayden are together ted nick and cole are together so just going to be calling everybody and doing a video call so hopefully this is something you guys enjoy if you like it leave comments tell us your favorite rut story in the comments also if you want to check out our website we got tons of stuff going up on there right now we got all kinds of merchandise whether it's camo stuff we got puffy jackets now we got tons of new hats that are super cool hayden's been working really hard to get that stuff online for you guys and available so we appreciate the support and thanks to hayden and crystal who is now working at the warehouse as well yeah just really appreciate the support really appreciate the effort from them and helps keep us on the road going hunting and making videos so i think i'm going to record this all in one day but who knows if i change shirts it's because i recorded it in a different day or locations you never know but thanks for watching let's get into it yeah go ahead and just bang your head on that again yeah just run that back Cole. you go first <laughs> i was scared of it all right so yeah the whole the whole purpose of this is to just hopefully record some good rut stories get people fired up about the rut you know and like examples that i've been thinking of would be like uh just any specific deer action or activity that is just like whoa that's real rut that's real rut like ted the one that i keep thinking of is when we were on the canoe in 2018 and the buck was like yeah you know grunting and chasing the other bucks off and stuff it's like that's one example um but yeah i just want to hear some of the ones that come to your guys's mind the two instances that come to my mind right off the bat is the kansas buck with ted last year just that whole trip i mean mm -hmm. from the first night to through the one you killed and then me and you in minnesota that one come grunting to us and coming to a decoy Mm -hmm. That just happened to be also mounted on the mechanism that was going to end his life, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Yeah, that checked him pretty good. So, yeah. You want to tell those then, Nick? Uh, yeah, I'll tell, I'll do, what do you, you know what story you're going to do? Yeah, I was going to talk about uh, Warb's decoy buck in 2019. Mm -hmm. Okay, well then I'm going to do Kansas then from last year. All right, good luck. <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Oh man, I don't even know what to say. So how do I just jump into this? Just be like, here I go. Yeah, I say, uh, here, here I go. There you go. Here I go. So uh, yeah, one instance that really jumps out to me is uh, last year me and Ted were hunting in Kansas. The second time we went to Kansas, and uh, when we got there, it was like November the eleventh or twelfth. Yeah, it was. Must have been the eleventh when we yeah. left to go out there. So yeah. we hunted the afternoon of the eleventh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we ended up killing one on like the fourteenth or fifteenth, but the rut was just really going on at that Popping point. Because we got there the first evening and we filmed, I don't know, like four or five different shooter bucks all just posturing, pushing each other around. Well, one really pushing all of them around. Mm -hmm. So that happened in one spot and chasing does all in there and then we went back in there the next morning and he rattled in a big buck that got our wind that one that was coming to the decoy yep he yep. got our wind so that's two days in a row we had that kind of action going on and then i think it was the third day is when you killed the one and we just saw these two bucks like sparring through a fence i think they even were <laughs> i think they were through the fence sparring yeah. and then we made a big loop around and got on them and uh they were both like tearing up the same bush and it was one little bitty buck and then the big one you killed and right before ted killed him i mean he was chasing this little buck around and he's like 15 or 12 yards away grunting right there just postured up walking right next to us and he has no idea mm -hmm. he looked like as big as a Volkswagen when he comes walking by because he's just all bristled up and going sideways like that, you know. <laughs> and then you also ended his life, so that was pretty. That was pretty awesome. That was fun. I think the biggest thing about that one is just 
when it's the rut, just trying to get as close as you can to the action, especially out there where you can sit back and find the action from just observing and then just flipping your way in and getting as close as you can before without spooking them. And that's all we did that yeah. morning. And then they just made a hundred yard move pretty much to get over there to where we were at for whatever reason. I don't, yeah, really we, just, we just got really lucky, right place, right time. But yeah, you're right. Just with the rut going on like that, you just got to go get in the middle of it. Yeah, which we had done the, the previous two days too, because we had been out there the trip before, found a good spot, and then we went back in there right away when we got back out to Kansas. And that was kind of the same thing. We were sitting probably 200 yards from those deer, and they were all having a rut frenzy, chasing mm-hmm. each other around, sparring, chasing does and stuff. And we did have a buck come by that was probably, I don't know, 60 or 70 yards down on the edge of the hill. Mm-hmm. And we just couldn't quite get to that one to shoot him. But, you know, just getting as close to seeing what happens from yeah. there. It's, it's fun during the rut, for sure. Never know what will happen. I feel like it's one of those things where every year, you, especially about right now, you start thinking, oh, you know, I can't wait till, you know, it's November and every day I go out and there's just bucks chasing does everywhere and there's bucks fighting, you know, and then that happens uh-huh. usually in a whole month for about a grand total of three days, you know, every year. It's like you yeah. you pick around and you don't see that action every every time you go out necessarily. So when you have those days, it is pretty special and you really remember that action. And then you convince yeah. yourself every year that that's going to happen every day, but it usually doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once it does happen, you forget about all the other days. Oh, yeah. Put a your thumb. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, the one that I was thinking of when I first got on this topic and kind of the one I texted you guys about was when I was hunting with Keith in 2020, we had been really just – not having much action we were we had a couple days where we had heard some deer moving on hillsides and could tell there's some chasing going on but never really much of a visual and the one day we set up it was about nine o'clock um and all of a sudden action started picking up and we started watching these bucks chasing does and all of a sudden it was like okay finally we're in the right spot and what was interesting about that encounter and something i've never seen before and never have seen after was what the buck was doing. So this is timber, a lot of leaf matter on the ground is really crunchy. And the one biggest buck stood there in the same spot for, I can't remember how long I'd have to go back and watch the raw clip, but he stood there and stomped the ground in the same place for so long that it almost just, became part of what you were hearing constantly and you forgot about it almost but he would just stand there and stomp the ground and that was his like hey stay back oh man everything i could dream of He's a definite shooter. He's big, big. Big wide thing. But it was just... And he just kept doing it. And it was really interesting. And I, I think that, you know, there's so many different things that you hear over the years that you realize, hey, sometimes me making a little bit of noise probably isn't that big of a deal because listen to this thing, you know, so that, yeah, I don't know, that's always cool to me is just the different sounds that you hear during that time frame too because generally you don't hear that much in September, maybe a little more in October, but then late October, November, they start grunting, they start scraping. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh, yeah. We're hoping to get into some of that action here uh, this afternoon. It's almost i mean not quite as cold as it was for me and you in minnesota right now but it's that much snow on the ground really damn cold <laughs> and we, and that should be kind of starting to lift off yeah, it, should get pretty, it should should get pretty wild yeah i think yeah it'll be interesting to see what 
what happens out there the next couple of days because yesterday was just a straight up blizzard out there all day pretty much we did you guys going out. see much action while it was blizzarding not a no. deer no the only deer we saw is when we were walking yeah. back to the truck we kicked some up out of a fence row that was next to some standing corn but even like driving around we weren't seeing anything at all yeah. anywhere so i saw one deer yesterday morning and she was just standing there hunched up, like looked like she'd been gut shot with just a bunch of snow on her back. Just cold. And that was that first bite yesterday morning. <laughs> that was the only deer I saw. Do you think that uh, the action beforehand was better than during the storm itself? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, there was like, there was like a feeding frenzy, like as soon as that snow started to pick up two nights ago, that was. Yeah. There was 40 deer in the field. And they weren't, there wasn't really much like rutting action like we were seeing in the morning. They were kind of just out there, heads in the ground, feeding as fast as they yeah. possibly could because they probably felt it coming. Yeah, it wasn't, they weren't sparring near as much as they were that, that morning. They were getting after it pretty good, you know, making a lot of rubs, scraping. I mean, we were watching them do all this, fighting. And then in the evening, it was just. Yeah, it was other, almost like something you'd see in January, just a bunch of deer going out to a field heads in the ground feeding other than the some of the small bucks that actually came up to the decoy you know they might have bristled up to it briefly for a second but then they would get comfortable with the decoy and then just stand there next to it and eat (laughs) they were out there at like two o'clock in the afternoon too because we were going to get in there and they were already standing out there we saw like six or seven deer already out in the field eating jeez yep so is the weather calming down like getting a little bit more leveled out i guess like cold still but not snowing yeah yeah like the storm has passed now seems like and the sun's gonna pop out and be just pretty weather with a lot of snow so i feel like the rut activity should start to pick up here i think it will yeah it'll be really cool and interesting to see the scrapes that you guys find in snow that'll be really sweet uh-huh. Yeah, I got one place in mind that I really want to go look at and see what the scrape is looking like there. I think sometimes yeah. I've even seen where the snow just naturally melts on those scrapes, which I don't know what that means or how that temperature is different right in that spot, but it seems like there's a lot of times if you get a little bit of snow, which I don't know how much exactly you guys got, but with a little bit like a dusting anywhere from an inch to three or four inches, it'll just completely melt right there so you just got a bare patch of dirt it's mm-hmm. real easy to I read the, i wonder if it's because of the piss in the dirt or something it might be or just the fact that it's just dirt and that yeah is melting it quicker i don't know but i guess i have one really cool picture on my phone that i always see scrolling through of a scrape it was during a gun season in early december but it was a blown up fresh scrape in the snow and that was pretty sweet just because you don't see that that often. Yeah. Um, yeah. At least when you live in Ohio where winter doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ted, what's your best rut story that comes to mind? Um, mine is back in 2019 when I was hunting with Warb in Iowa. And this was one of those deals where we weren't on to a whole lot before we found this spot. Um, we'd been, I think it was like November, the week of November 10th to 17th or something around that time frame, And, uh, we'd been hunting, hadn't been having any luck. So then we just popped into this spot that we had scouted in the summer and just walked up the fence row real quick at, right before dark. And right as soon as we got up there, we started seeing spotting bucks out in this, like, I think it was a cut cornfield or a cut bean field or something. And they were all running these same two ridges throughout the property. And it was all kind of connecting down towards this pond. So we went in there the next morning, hunted not too far off the road, had a buck come off one of those ridges, hit a scrape in front of us and then work off. But then same deal that next morning we saw a buck cruising on one of the ridges it was two ridges and then they connected and hit a pond and uh same thing that afternoon i think we set up in the same exact spot that afternoon 
and saw the same deal. So then the next morning went in and just dove right into that pond with the decoy and pretty much 30 minutes after first light, we spot a shooter and it was like up above us going along the, one of those ridges. And so we rattled and he stopped and then he kind of ran down in towards the pond where we were sitting at, but we just kind of figured he went off because it was after Warb rattled, it was like probably 30 minutes. And then all of a sudden he just showed back up. And he, at that point he was like right in front of us coming in, bristling up to the decoy sidestepping in there and uh shot him <laughs> exactly shot him took off and that was that was the end of it but it was interesting because a lot of times you're hunting think of hunting ridges and it's you're thinking about hardwood ridges but this was just like obviously a wide open crop field but you could still see the roll in the terrain where they were where those bucks were cruising at and it was pretty consistent of them going on either the top of this ridge or the top of that ridge. Mm. And uh, there was a lot of them doing that same thing. So it was kind of cool. I think the other interesting part about that one is the delay, like the delayed response where he didn't come in right away because it seems like there's more times than not when you rattle, they're either there right now or they're not, or they're not yeah. coming. But it does yeah. happen where it's worth it to be patient, and obviously this is a great example of that. Yeah. This one was – it was cool because I remember sitting there thinking, well, that didn't work. Cause, but I knew that he had ran down into the cover that we were kind of sitting around. And it was he was like walking when we first saw him. Warb rattled. He stopped and listened to it. And then he just like kind of took off pretty fast down into that drainage not right at us but down in there so i kind of thought he was gone or he kind of spooked and was out of there but i think he just got down in there and probably was working a scrape or something down there and then saw the decoy at some point because the decoy was like up above us Mm -hmm. i'm assuming he saw him and then worked his way in and started sidestepping whatever but yeah it was cool it's hard to sit that long a lot of times when you do rattle a lot of times it's like you rattle oh yeah sit there for maybe 10 minutes and then you just get up and go on to the next thing but that one we were committed to staying there anyway so we were just sitting there yeah it i i agree it's so many situations it happens immediately like i i can think of a lot of situations where i've rattled over the years or been with somebody that's rattled and it's like right now or uh-huh. if the, that doesn't happen, they never do show. But there are there are on occasion times where it happens, or like I've definitely watched other people's videos where they've had kind of a delayed response. Um, just an interesting thing where I do think sometimes, and I always, maybe I'm reading into it a little bit too much, but I always try to think like from a buck's perspective. It's like if he's alone and he doesn't have a doe, he could have two responses to it. It's like, oh, there's something going on over there. I got to get there now. Or he's like, eh, I don't really feel like fighting right now. Let me go see what's going on down here. Like you said, might check a scrape or, you know, just make a loop and, and check to see if there's other does around. And then he's like, doesn't find anything. He's like, oh, I'll circle back over there. Or he's laying in a bed and hears it and is like, eh, it starts to aggravate him just enough that he's like, I'm going to get up and go check it out. But. I don't know. Yeah. Seems to be the case. It's like more times than not, they come fast, but if not, it is worth waiting if you can a little bit longer. For sure. Cool. Was that like, Go what ahead. a, <laughs> sorry, <Cole. laughs> no, 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 it's great. Uh, what like time of the month was it? Do you remember like the day of the month, November it was like peak. I think it was like, I think it was right it's around the ninth. Peak. Or you said the ninth? Was it the ninth or the twelfth? Something in there. I thought it was like the. I thought it was like seventeenth to the nineteenth. Is what I thought it was. Maybe. Oh Remember yeah. Be- that is right. It would be seventeenth to the nineteenth because at that time frame I was hunting with Grant, and we didn't end up going over there because we were in bucks, like yeah. nonstop too. 
So it would have been uh-huh. that those it was those dates. The 2019 season of November 17th through 19th is some of my favorite deer hunting memories of my entire life. That was the wildest <laughs> three days ever. Uh-huh. It was really great all until I hit that one a little bit too high, and then it got pretty sad. But otherwise, it was pretty damn fun up to that point. <laughs> it seems like like every year I always think, oh, getting close to Halloween, it should be getting really good, whatever. But then it seems like even those first week of November, it can be really good or it can be, you know, kind of slow. And then it seems like that once it gets into the teens is, of November is when it really – ramps up Mm -hmm. a lot of places anyway yeah i agree with that i feel that i've had really really fun hunts um in late october but it seems hit or miss and that kind of happens all the way up until i don't know right right around veterans day and then after that it's like it has a tendency to really open up for us i mean every season and not to say that we haven't had good hunts earlier than that we certainly have but i would say just year in and year out like if you had to pick a few days it's like i would just go mid to late part of the month and you know yep. you can only hunt one weekend out of the year it'd probably be like 17th 17th and 18th <laughs> <laughs> for sure you got any stories cole yeah i've been brewing okay sorry <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the one that comes to mind is uh, last year, it was the 4th and the 5th of November. I'm pretty sure that we hunted. Well, and it doesn't get good till after that. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, we already figured that out. <laughs> no. So this is, a, I actually have a video up on my channel. We watched it last night where me and my two buddies shoot three bucks in 12 hours, I think it was. But we went in to this piece it's my buddy's farm he's got a couple hundred acres that we can all kind of hunt on so we went in and it was kind of a hardwood ridge with a bunch of oaks on it and then dropped off into like a wisconsin marshy swampy thing and my buddy kellen and i just went in there and got up in a random tree in the dark in the morning and as soon as it cracked light there's just deer and bucks everywhere around us and we ended up having a nice one kind of work 100 yards and we watched him come up, work the ridge on this one trail and drop off back into the swamp through the bedding area. And we ended up seeing several other younger bucks and does kind of running around. And it was, I think it was like 45 degrees and raining the entire day. So not fun to be out there. So we went back at about 10 o'clock, dried our clothes and went back in a couple hours later. And we moved to where we saw that nicer buck come up through the ridge and go down on that trail we were like 20 yards from it and uh i i mean it was whipping wind at this point like hanging on to the tree with our hands because it was blowing so bad but eventually we had a nice buck come through this uh bedding area and he was walking right at us and he turned i shoot and miss at 30 yards and i'm just like i'm down in the dumps because that's because I missed one the year before, too. So that's two deer in a row that I've missed. And, I mean, I'm just throwing a pity party for myself. And, no kid, like, four minutes later, another buck is coming down the trail on the same exact trail but from the opposite way. And I stop him and I shoot him literally exactly where I stopped that other one and missed him, like, four minutes before that. And he ended up, I ended up killing him. He ran, like, 200 yards and we found him. And that same night, my buddy was just down the road and he shot one at 345 doing the same thing just cruising down the trail and so that was cool and then we really didn't think it could get any better but then we went my kellen was on the boat the next morning who filmed me the night before and we went in and got in the same hangers that we hung the day before mm-hmm. and we were up all night cutting those deer up so we were 45 minutes late <laughs> and we he forgets as we get all the way stand he forgets his release He's coming back. <laughs> he climbs up the tree and not not two minutes from where he just walked, a doe comes and is standing there and we can hear something grunting behind her. And the same buck that we watched the morning before run that ridge and come back down through the trail. Yep. Did the exact same thing, same path, came right down the trail and he shot him at twenty five yards, fifteen minutes after we got into the stand on uh, November fifth, I think it was. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah. just like it was going on there those two days and that buck was there. I mean, all those, all those bucks were there and it was happening. And I mean, we walked literally right where all those deer came through, but they were just so fired up, went right to our ground scent. And I mean, kind of just when you're in it, you're in it. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was probably the most fun that and, I've ever had. Deer. And when you're in it, it's like, you almost can't do anything wrong, which I think is no. a misconception that we've all been like taught over the years is you don't want to mess anything up but it's like when you're in that hot spot you're in the hot seat you can miss one you can spook one you can i mean you can almost not do anything wrong i don't think that when there's a hot doe they're really that concerned about what's happening around them as far as danger goes i mean obviously they'll bump off and they'll leave for like temporarily but there's so many times when I look back on, you know, all of our hunts over the years that we've had examples of deer, I guess, right back in the same area. We just felt like we blew it up the day before. That makes sense. And like, mm-hmm. to me, it's more beneficial to just keep moving around until you find that than it is to just sit and not see anything. I mean, to each their own, but like, I'd much rather just move all day until you find that hot spot and there's plenty of signs that'll tell you that you're in the hot spot. Like fresh sign pops up a lot. Obviously that's something we talk about all the time, but just seeing other deer, seeing younger bucks, like there was more than one buck in that story that you just told Cole and same with all the stories, really. Like, yeah, I think the crazy thing, it doesn't sound like you guys saw like hardly any does, right? Just saw no, like it was one like doe. one doe and she wasn't, yeah maybe two does and a couple fawns but like it was just like when they're just every direction but it was all coming together right where we were Mm -hmm. i mean i think just like not overthinking it and when they're in there just go in there even if it's not the best access and you're gonna have to walk right to where all the deer are just go i I mean we ended up that buck i missed we ended up seeing him coming down the exact same trail again like an hour later yeah. After I just shot at him, he was coming back, circling back around to it. It's just like, I think you just, if you're not seeing stuff during the rut, I think you just got to keep moving and trying to find it. Like, It's happening I don't somewhere. Think, yeah, I mean, not to say sitting isn't going to work during the rut, but mm-hmm. I mean, if you want to get in it as fast as possible, just walk and try to find it. Yeah, I feel like those experiences of true rut frenzy <laughs> you're better off going to them than you are waiting for it to come to you. Because if you wait for it to come to you, you may not experience it in a whole, you know, a whole season. But if you continue to move around, you're likely going to find it at some point. And while it may feel reckless to be moving around and bumping a deer here and there, like once you find it, it's fine. You just park it there and you'll be in them for probably the next two to three days even. I mean, that's that's been our experience as well is like when you hit that hot spot, it's a little bit of a, a window, three, four days sometimes where it's just nonstop action. So I always think that's probably the most fun part about the rut is when you finally find that and you're like, okay, saddle up. We're about to have some crazy stuff happen. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but I think when you see a, a buck going down a trail, I think like I think of that one where you shot that big one in Missouri with yes. Jake, and you saw those bucks going down that trail, and you just went to that trail, and then you shot one right there. Same kind of thing. Like you see that buck on that trail, just if you can't shoot it, you probably should be able to. Yeah, got to move to. Yeah, I think that's a really great point as well. I think that it, it makes no sense to just stay out of the game. Just keep moving until you're right in it and. Yeah, there's a lot of examples of that over the years, but that one with Ted is when I was just I was just working on the last podcast and I was scrubbing through that video. I was like, man, what a cool like what a cool experience to like see that trend move right up there and then shoot the biggest one. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Like what day? Was that November? It was November fourth. But the that one, like we watched three bucks walk that trail and they kept getting our win. And then that's when we looped down there. And then we sat there for probably, I feel like it was like three hours at least. Didn't see anything. And then right before dark, that one came out. Mm. But it's a hot spot. Like all those other bucks are those those clues telling you 
that something's it, going on there. Like whether or not there's a hot doe in the area or not, th- that action with younger bucks is a pretty dang good indicator that like big boys lingering around somewhere or he's on his way. So that's yeah. pretty sweet. Cool dudes. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, good luck tonight. Keep me updated. I'm fired up. I'm waiting for Jake to get here, I'm trying to record this podcast. That way I can go start scouting up there, but I'm fired up, man. I'm ready to, I'm ready to bow hunt too, man. I'm ready to do some bow hunting for deer. <laughs> oh. Well, hopefully we can get it done tonight. <laughs> yep. Or tomorrow. It's going to be fun here the next month or so. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be real, real fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be just tons of traveling too, which I love, you know. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> for sure. All right, dudes. Well, keep safe. Be good. Send me updates and we'll talk soon. Right on. We'll see you later. See ya. Am I coming through clear for you? Oh, yeah. So, I want to hear a story about a great rut encounter. Are you talking lockdown specifically or just any rut? No, really any rut. Uh, anytime. The one I was thinking about, I guess as I, I was driving earlier, was the one where we were boating around and we saw all the deer on the field up there and then we kind of made a move on them and looked across and that mm-hmm. one was locked down with that doe on the point and had it pushed up against the lake and we went back into the same spot the next morning we didn't really have a play on them that night there was one or two bucks on that same point with her and i don't think we ever even saw the doe that night did we we mm-hmm. just saw him standing in the same spot and we're just like it seems like he's with the doe but we never confirmed it i think we even rattled too that night yeah and, and he, he didn't, didn't react, react at all. yeah yeah he just stood there and then didn't care at all and we went back in there the next morning we're going in the dark and we got the headlamps on got the full body decoy slung over our shoulders i think we had it put together and everything or no we didn't did we because we had to put it up we had to put it together as we started seeing bucks and we could see eyes up on the ridge and it, I, I don't think we could confirm that it was a big buck but it just looked like they were real far apart so we're like, well, there's still some deer in here. And then we start moving up the edge of the water a little further. And then all of a sudden we heard grunting or I don't know if we saw him or heard him first or what. I think we heard a little chase going on mm-hmm. maybe. And he was just like pretty obviously running a bunch of other bucks off and just grunting, snort wheezing. And we stood there for probably 45 minutes. And we're within probably 35 yards of this thing the entire time. And there was a couple points where he heard us. We started trying to put the decoy together. And he heard us doing that, I think. So he came over to like 15 yards and he's like grunting at us, kind of postured up. And it's like, we might have to do some self-defense type stuff here at some point. And all this is in the dark. We're waiting for it to get light out. We get the decoy put together and it's like, we're, we're just kind of waiting for legal light basically at this point. We're going to make basically any, any sort of noise. It seems like this thing's going to come right at us because we did it twice. The first time I guess was when we were walking. And he just heard us walking towards him and there's enough elevation where he had to come, you know, to 10, 15 yards to where he could see us. And then the second time was when we were setting the decoy up. Wind's blowing right across the lake. Everything's perfect. It's like, I mean, I'm going to have to mess it up pretty bad, like the shot or something like that for us not to get this thing, it seems like. And so we get the decoy set up out there. We're just waiting on first light and then... He can't see the decoy. That's important no. too. Like from where no. he was, he he had to hear something to come towards us to be able to yeah. see it. So we were just, I mean, we were trying not to be loud because we knew if he came over there and saw it, he was probably just going to come over and knock it over before we could even legally shoot him. That's what. That's how fired up this thing was. I mean, th- this whole time we're sitting there listening to him. He's just running buck after buck over, like uh, off this doe, it sounds like. And he's got her pushed up against the lake, just like we often see, you know, they get him into a spot when they're locked down where the wind's just blowing out across the area where he doesn't, where they don't think other deer are going to go. Basically, it seems like just so they can get left alone, especially big bucks find those spots and they're good at like you and Grant had that footage, that real big one, mm-hmm. like keep it, keeping them in that spot. That's it's crazy. I mean, they'll gore them and be pretty brutal with them just to keep them where they want them during that time. But anyway, all this is happening and, we're sitting there just enjoying the show, <clears throat> and 
it's starting to get pretty intense because we're waiting not you know it's like we're looking at the phones it's one or two minutes till opener and all of a sudden we just hear deer blowing and running off like what the heck and like I, at first i was just like he's just that's just deer blowing at you know because they'll get together like that when they're where there's a bunch of them around they just start blowing at each other but all of a sudden i can hear the duck boat behind us coming right up the edge of the lake and all, all the deer must have ran up into the timber but <coughs> that was just watching all the vocalizations and the way like him defend that doe that was that was pretty sweet even mm-hmm. though we didn't get him and yeah. then we got to mess up on another one later that morning so that was a pretty good day yeah that was that was a wild day and if i remember correctly up to that point we had not been really in much action at least for the last five or six days like it had been some action where I, my memory i think is... we blew the stock on that one that you spotted on the open ridge there other than that we yeah. didn't you know we had real hot late october action and that was it would have been november 9th or something like that probably because mm-hmm. we shot the one on the 11th yep yep so and we kept yeah, just was... kept moving yeah that was the sure. biggest takeaway from that it's just moved until all of a sudden we had the night before that morning the duck boat bumped them and then we had another encounter that we messed up after that too all in the same area and it's just like one of the things that we had talked about um when Cole told his story was the fact that you're either in it or you're not. And when you're in it, it's like, you almost can't mess it up too much. You know, like even the duck boat spooking those deer off, it's like we moved up what 200 yards and got right back on another buck. And it's just yeah. insane. Yeah. There was a hot doe or at least one hot doe in there. So that's where all the bucks were. Mm-hmm. It's, as I was thinking about like people just not liking the lockdown phase too. And Warb and I were talking about not, I get we weren't talking about the rut. We did like that deer school live the other night. Mm-hmm. And there's people are all year. People are hunters are complaining about something that's going on. And it's just like, you know, instead of doing that, you just got to figure out how you can use that to your advantage. Basically. Mm-hmm. It's like the, if the deer are locked down, I mean, go find them. Cause you're probably going to, you're not just going to find one. You're going to find him and probably, two or three other ones that you might shoot because they're, they're going to all be with that hot dough. So you just got to, like you said, keep the wheel turning or the boat moving until you get eyes on something or get into some good sign. I, and I hate to say that it's easy, but when you find a lockdown buck, it's pretty, we're pretty efficient at, at, tagging those deer they're just, so vulnerable they're no, yeah. there's there's not a time in the year where they're mo- more vulnerable or susceptible to calling and stuff like that i mean you can go on the channel and just watch that but yeah that they're they're like they're so emotional at that point it's like they're just i mean it's what they wait for all year mm-hmm. is that time so and they're gonna do basically whatever they can in their power to protect it so mm-hmm. as long as you've got a good win you can get away with quite a bit decoys obviously work really well but if you can just get into some thick cover, that's all you really need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where they got to come in and look for you. Yeah, I feel like that's the thing that I always look forward to doing the most is just the fact that you can get in thick stuff, cover ground, call a lot, be extremely mobile, and just try those mm-hmm. different super aggressive tactics. And they can work any time of the year, obviously, but mm-hmm. it just continues to ramp up that. Uh, yeah, being the susceptibility, I guess, to the calling, if that's the correct yeah. terminology there. But, yeah. I'd... Especially, I, I mean, a calling can be hit or miss if they don't have a doe, but it seems like when they're the one with that doe, I mean, they're they're protecting her at all costs. Mm-hmm. It's like just I, There hasn't been a situation where I can think of where it's just like, you'll have deer run away from a gun call, but usually that's because they've been beat up or whooped on. Mm-hmm. Like, if they have the doe, it doesn't seem like they're not like as long as you get within the bubble they're going to come and try to run you off it seems like and it is different than elk for example yeah like if elk They'll have just gather them and take them away mhm yeah if they hear this intruder it seems like a, a fair percentage of the time they'll just round and go yeah not always but sometimes and and then more times than not it really seems like unless mm-hmm. you get in the right situation it's easier for them to do that Mm-hmm. And I wonder if what it, I mean, there's probably a bunch of different reasons, but I wonder if deer are just like 
they don't have a, probably have as many spots that they feel like they're safe where they like they want to stay there so they're going to de- they're more likely mm-hmm. to defend it or what but it's definitely a real thing where... and maybe too it's the one one in one like a one doe one yeah. buck scenario versus True. a harem of cows with a bull yep. it, it definitely is interesting and to your point about the amount of available safe space it's like deer just live on that smaller scale in general. So that one little spot that does feel safe where other deer aren't going to get to them very, very often. But on the flip side too, generally when they're locked down, they're not in a spot that you'd ever find them anyway. Right, right. That's, so that's, maybe, that, maybe that's not true, but maybe it's more than one on one thing. But either way, they're susceptible to calling when they got a doe. The, the uh, I guess another quick example that pops into my mind, and sometimes I think it's it's almost comical how much he was moving, is the one that you shot in 21 where we got out of the boat, made the move, and when he first came in, he's literally running in. He runs up, looks around, doesn't see what he thought he was going to see, and then he runs back, and at first we thought yeah. we spooked him. And yeah. Then, we moved up a little bit. He heard it again and came right back in. And it's like, who knows how far he was moving? Like, that's a pretty weird one to me where he was actually covering some ground to get to that point. And I thought that, I always think that's such a cool experience that we had where, and, and I guess the one in Minnesota last year with Nick did kind of the same thing. He heard something and he just was like, and then he saw the deer. He doesn't want it even close. Yeah, and he's just like, I'm going yeah. right to it. And I just think that's cool yeah. and a confidence boost for if you find yourself in a situation to like, once you know one's in there, take your time, work it a little bit, get in a spot that you feel like you can pull off a shot yeah. and, and just call and be yeah, patient. Yeah, even if you're not going to use a vehicle or, or, or a boat or anything like that, even just as you're moving through the woods, just try to be sounding like a deer or something not not human like i guess because i mean just if you're walking through woods or whatever that suits it just have an arrow knock because you never i mean with alabama we had that happen yep. where we were setting I was up gonna a tree say stand that. and it's like all, <laughs> all send the bucks running right into us because he thinks we're another deer so my memory of that is about is about this i'm like what maybe three feet off the ground and it's windy, I can barely hear you, and all of a sudden I kind of realize something's going on, and I peek around the tree, and there's a buck inside of 10 yards, and he's, <laughs> like, immediately was just like, oh, gone. But uh, yeah. had we been ready, you know? Yeah. But that's pretty, yeah, pretty crazy. That's that's what I feel like the whole point of this podcast is to get people excited for those rare occasions. Or I, I say rare, but it's like in recent years as we've moved more and more, in cover ground and like true mobile, you know, hunting, like where mm-hmm. we're not being in the same areas unless we find that hot spot. It seems like it's happening more and more, but just getting people fired up about those experiences. Cause it's mm-hmm. like that, that's when I think rut, I think of those weird things happening. Bucks just yeah. being foolish. Yeah. It's an easy, I feel like it's an easy time too to like, cause you're, you're either going to be in it or not. So it's easy to not always be prepared, but you just got to be ready for that opportunity. Like, because everything can change just like that. So just trying to stay ready as much as possible and just visualize, you know, whatever your shot opportunities are going to be and just be ready for how you're going to make that happen at all times is, is pretty important, I guess, in all hunting situations, but especially with how fast things can happen during the rut. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we didn't end up killing that buck that morning. But from the story I was talking about, not the original buck, but the buck that came storming in on us after we, I just wasn't in a, a good place to do it. Yeah. And he kind of caught us, you know, in a, in a bad, a bad spot. So, but with that one, like, it was like probably one of the best learning experiences we could ever get. It's like, while it was frustrating at the time, it's like, I look yeah. back on that one all the time and I'm like, this is why, <laughs> this yeah. is why you, you get ready. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. You know, it's easy if you don't have those experiences too to just let the hundred out set in and be like, "Yeah, it probably won't happen." You know. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, you get back on the road, and then I guess we'll probably see you here in what eight, nine hours. Yeah, I hope so. If everything keeps going well. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, Jacob. <laughs> you caught me while reliving the moment of the three day in a row stock with grant 
in 2019. Oh, yeah. I'm sitting here staring at that footage, and it's like, oh, the mistakes were made. Yeah, mm. that's that's with about 90% of them. <laughs> it is cool to look back on that. Like that, I was just talking to Ted and Cole and Nick for this segment, and we were talking about um, you know the best days. And I was like, man, that, cause you killed a buck in those three days and we were in the action. That's why we didn't go party with you guys is cause we were stalking bucks those three days or whatever day right. that was. And, uh, I was just like, yeah, that was like what the 13th, 14th, 15th, somewhere it was in there? the 17th, 18th, 19th. Oh, okay. Yep. And just madness. And I just, uh, think back like how lucky, you know, you are some seasons to have those experiences where it's like, I, I mean, we literally stalked three different big bucks in the same river bottom piece in three days. Like how, I mean, yep. talk about reps, pretty freaking sweet. Oh yeah. When you're hot, you're hot in the rut. When you're not, you're pretty bored. That's <laughs> it's, it's literally been the, the like takeaway from every segment of this so far is that exactly that. It's like, if you're in them, super fun and good if you're not it's like probably time to start moving to where you can find it because otherwise yeah you're bored yeah you might as well just move until you get in them <laughs> mm-hmm. it's either that or just sit there and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and then, and then got, eventually get, one comes walking by and you shoot him or you get caught talking to your buddy because you're bored yeah <laughs> Or what happened? What's happened to me several times is you sit for like six hours, and then you just literally can't stand it any longer. So, you know, you climb down, and then when you bend over to take your bow off your rope, a big buck walks up to fifteen yards and blows at you and runs off. And it's like, whoops! Uh, yeah. The only way to fix that, if you're going to be a, a sitter in the rut, is just to sit, like every single second of every single hour or minute of yeah. every hour of every day yeah. that you can legally hunt and just wait. And like a hand and it'll on probably the happen. Yeah. yeah. It's just going to be miserable. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, until it does. Well, and I think about how much of a luxury it is to be set up with somebody and have the ability to like, you know, take your mind off the boredom every once in a while, but there's pros and cons to that too, right? Like, if, you get, if you're like me and you start getting too into the conversation, you start taking your eyes off the trails or the places you expect them to be, and then next thing you know, you get caught off guard. But one time back oh, in the yeah. day, Ben and I ended up, we ended up getting this buck, but we had seen him once, and he like went the opposite way. And then we were standing there, and this is the first time, this is the first time we had ever had a, like a double set to where we were filming each other we were still in high school and i turned and i'm talking to him and all of a sudden he's like hey we look down and the buck is like 15 yards quarter and walking away we had just gone through the shooting lane and missed the opportunity because i was talking to ben in this in the tree and then luckily he ended up coming back again and went through that same trail just a little bit further and, and i made a good shot on him and ironically I'm no joke. It had to have been like half a second before the bow goes off. The camera died. It was back before we had like better cameras <laughs> and we were like trying to keep the batteries warm all the time. And the camera just like clips off right as the buck's stepping into the, sh- like <laughs> so stupid, but fun nonetheless. Funny memory. Oh yeah. Heck yeah. So yeah, we're going to have some of those cold days here coming up. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds, seems like it's supposed to get real brutal. Yeah, it's not there yet. It's 81 out right now. <laughs> it's just as uh, typical Missouri weather. Right. It's like there's no... We have average temperatures on like the weather channel and stuff, but those are just in forecasts. The actual temperatures are never around the average temperatures. Right. It's like 85, 90 degrees when it's not supposed to be, or then, you know, in a couple of days, it's going to be a low of 20. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And we haven't even been below freezing yet. Really? So, no frost yet yeah. at all? No, we haven't had a frost yet. We hunted persimmon grove last night, and 
most of them were hard as a rock because they haven't had a frost yet. Really? But as soon as that frost hits and it'll be a hard frost next week, then stuff will change, you know, on a dime mm-hmm. like that. So. Yeah. I was just talking, like I said, to those guys and they're in completely different weather. They have, I think they said it was like a blizzard yesterday and supposed to be, you know, no warmer than whatever 30 degrees for the next handful of days and probably getting colder yet so yeah we've been snapping nick nick has been snapchatting us back and forth and it's like we're hunting t-shirts down here nick and he and then he sends us a snapchat of it snowing like sideways he said don't worry it's on its way (laughs) dude it's so crazy how you can be yeah like two totally different climates i mean it does we're only a couple states away right but it's 55 degree temperature difference yeah that's what I, I always feel like ohio and specifically like southern ohio is very similar to the missouri weather and it's like this time of the year you're just dealing pretty dang warm you know like it's gonna yeah, be warm I mean, most you get a cold front and then and then that's real good and maybe it'll hang on for like three or four days where you know it's it's pleasant but then it'll go be warm like it was <laughs> Me and Hayden started hunting Monday morning. What is today? Friday? Thursday. Thursday. We started hunting Monday morning, and Monday morning it was like a low of 51, which wasn't too bad. And we saw, like we were just cruising and saw some bucks Monday morning right at first light. And then since then it's been highs in the 80s, lows in the high 60s, right around 70. And like last night we were in the spot. We were on the X and didn't see anything during shooting hours it was 10 minutes after when we when we had just got everything packed up and we looked up and there was four bucks walking across the field right to us but you know they're just not moving they're standing up and they're just not making it very far at all during daylight when it's that warm yeah yeah it's the time of the year where it can be real frustrating in that way because it's like if you know you're close and you're not getting the weather to just get them to push that little bit I, I feel like I have a love hate relationship with October and even early November where it's just like, eh. yeah, it, you, in two weeks, it won't matter. No, <laughs> once <laughs> it, it gets to November 9th, 10th, no, it doesn't, it's not going to matter. But for that, like you said, the end of October and early November, right when they're just starting to get going, like, yes, they're, it is the rut. It's the beginning of the rut, but they're not all cranked up it's a slow process like every day from here until the 10th ish Mm -hmm. it's just like ramping up a little bit at a time every day and you and it's like i mean we're what are we 15 days away from that Mm -hmm. so yeah there's a decent amount of time that's got to pass before they go on they're they're full on rutting Mm -hmm. but when you have those cold days like next week I think this weekend and then the beginning of next week, it's really going to get cold Mm -hmm. and we'll probably get into some good hunting. So I guess to, to buy the time until that point, you got any good stories of like your favorite rut activity, like those days you dream of, like when you think back and you're like, oh man, those days were just nuts. Cause that's kind of the topic of this, of this podcast. Like in general or specific story? More of a specific story. Uh, I don't, I know we, man, I talk about this one all the time, but that decoy buck was pretty freaking awesome. I, I, I feel and like it's that's one a good of one. the, it's one of the best ones. Uh, like as far as a, a pure rut experience, because it was, what day was it? The ninth when we found it? Uh, the, I, I think, think you the shot him what? The 11th? Yeah, it might have been the 10th or the 11th when I shot him. I don't know. It was the 9th, 10th, 11th right in there. And it's all, you know, every year right there in that time frame is really good. Me and Pat had an amazing rut hunt in 2011 on November 8th and 9th where we saw mm-hmm. like, you know, 15 different bucks and four or five shooters. You shot one just in that all, time frame, right? Yeah, I shot one that that morning of the 9th at 8 a.m. And it was one of those hunts where we we got in there the day before we hung the stand and we went to bed that night like, dude, we're gonna kill a freaking buck tomorrow. Yep. Like it's they we are in the hole right now, and we got in there and boom, killed him within like an hour. 
It's like the second deer that showed up walking right down the trail, right underneath the tree. And sometimes it works like that, but man, that eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th, somewhere along in there. And then for like the next week after that is just Parties. bonkers. <laughs> yeah. And that decoy buck was a similar situation where, you know, we had been really struggling through early November, mm -hmm. hadn't got on much. I mean, hunted nonstop for like a week straight. Mm hmm. And it was just really slow, very hit or miss. And so we were slept in that morning and then we're like, we'll just drive out here and fart around, you know, go to a spot we haven't been in a, in a little bit, pull in, get out of the car, 9.30 a.m. Zach looks up like, holy crap, dude, big buck, big buck. And I look up and, and then before you know it, there's a doe out there and there's three big bucks and two of them are huge and they're chasing her around. We ended up seeing another one or two giant bucks in the next 45 minutes. And then we just are in bucks the rest of the day. And yeah, it was, it went from zero to hero like that. Mm -hmm. And it was just cause we found the hot action mm -hmm. and then it, it carried on to the next morning. The next morning, I think we set up in a stand and then we put the decoy out mm -hmm. And we, it was pretty slow for the first couple of hours, but we knew like, man, there, we saw like 10, 12 bucks in here yesterday, There's even no though way. we sent, yeah, we sat there for like two and a half hours and didn't see anything. We just kept thinking like, there's no way they're not here. They're just, they're laid down right now. They're taking a quick breather, but they're going to be out there again. And then boom, they, sh the decoy buck showed up with his doe and we called him in and killed him. But that was one of my, that's one of my favorite rut hunts in, in conjunction with that hunt with Pat, mm -hmm. you know, but it always is like that. Me and, me and Eric had that one a couple of years ago on the ninth where we went in that morning and we got set up late <laughs> because we we're trying to get the double set up in a tree and we're screwing around trying to get everything up there and camera arm, right. And you know, got the shot over here and the GoPro. And then the deer shows up and it's a freaking big buck and Eric's halfway big up buck. the tree and I'm trying to sell film on the wrong side of the tree and it didn't work. Anyway, thing blows out of there. We're pissed. We left, go to another spot two hours later and immediately just bucks everywhere, chasing does, fighting. I'm halfway up the tree with a stand in my right hand and my bow in the, in the left hand. Eric is hanging off the bottom peg, trying to reach down and grab the camera as a giant buck chases a doe by us like not chases but just lightly walks a doe by us at 10 <laughs> yards and nobody at nobody except me and eric have this picture because the camera's on the ground like we're trying to get everything up in the tree just ignorant it's like that particular day if we just would have hunted on the ground and got there a little bit earlier we would have killed one that morning and yeah. then we'd have killed you know we wouldn't even been in the right. second spot that afternoon <laughs> right but if we wouldn't have been screwing that's why man i the filming stuff especially during the rut when you're hanging all that crap i'm all good if it's before daylight mm -hmm. or if it's after dark mm -hmm. But if I'm hanging stuff during the day at any point in the rut, I'm a nervous oh, freaking terrible. wreck because you, you just, you can't do anything. Yeah. That's, it's a tough, it's a tough situation. Yeah. And they can get on you so quick because if they're, if you think about like a buck laying 70 yards from me in the thick stuff and you can only see 20, 30 yards before it hits the thick stuff and he gets up and starts coming at you while you're even just tying one stick to a tree. I mean, he can cover that ground in an instant and then he's on you and you're not ready. I mean, I'm sure there's and when probably... we're video and it takes so long sometimes, mm -hmm. I mean, with the saddle gear, it's faster, but, and sometimes we can get set up in like 15, 20 minutes in a perfect world. Mm -hmm. But man, that's frustrating when you got a funky tree and you've got to finagle everything and get it just right. And it takes you 45 minutes mm -hmm. that whole entire time. I'm just nervous as hell because we've had so many of them come in while we're getting it set up. Well, t it happened to Ted and Ben in uh, Arkansas a couple of years ago, I think, right? Where oh, yeah. Ben didn't have the camera yet and the buck was coming in. Yep. It's like, if you're going to, if, that's the way I think about it anyway, is especially during the rut, if you're going to get there at first light to the spot that you're hunting, 
don't even mess with climbing. Mm -hmm. You know, just be attentive and ready to shoot. Mm -hmm. If you can get there, if you, if you got a spot in mind where a tree works well, then get there freaking early and get the thing set up. That way you're not monkeying around up there when it's mm -hmm. shooting hours. You've got an arrow knocked and you're ready to roll whenever it's time to shoot. And then you might sit there all day and not see a freaking thing, but that's just the thing. You, you don't know when it's going to happen in the rut. Mm -hmm. You just, if you're sitting like that, you don't know. It could yeah. be at any moment, at any hour of the day. And Murphy's law, you know, it's like, oh, he's yeah. going <laughs> to come by when you're getting ready or when you're not ready and don't, and your bows on the ground and you got a climbing stick in one hand and a tree stand or something in the other. That's just drives me insane. But when, when, when it hits those crazy, like two, three day spans of action, do you feel like there's ever a consistent weather pattern or anything that like maybe triggers that? Or I, I guess I always think it's just you're in the right spot with the hot dough, but do, do you see any consistency with like weather or anything that you can think of? It's just a question that popped into my head that it's like, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. I mean, I, I, after a certain point, no, because like all these examples, like we talked about the decoy buck days, the days with me and Pat, mm -hmm. and then the, the day with Eric, mm -hmm. those are all between the 8th and the 12th of November. And at least two out of the three of those were above average temperatures, like warm. Yeah. Cause I shot the buck, the open gate buck with Pat. It was 60 that morning <laughs> when we got up. <laughs> And then the the decoy buck, we had tornado warnings that yeah, day, so yeah. I know it was warm. Mm -hmm. That day was like unusually it, warm. Yeah, like stale too. And we I remember yeah. us talking about it after the fact. It was like the day before was I wouldn't say it was cool. It was probably actually was on better. the warm warm side, but it was but it was clear and a little bit of breeze. Just had more of a classic November day feel. And then that next morning, it was real gray real stale, not much wind movement. And that tends to, uh, lead to more mid to late morning sightings. And that's something that like, since even at that point we were like, it kind of seems like that's a tendency we're seeing. And then since then, I feel like I feel even more firmly in that where it's like that stale, calm morning. And then you get that wind pick up mid morning and that's when they start. Then they start shifting like, around mm -hmm. and stuff. Yep. Yep. I don't, I don't see much one. After in our area, after the fifth or the sixth, once they start getting ramped up, I don't, I'm sure weather, you know, may help in some instances, mm -hmm. especially as it gets later in the month. But for like that next 10 days, the fifth, two weeks, fifth through the 20th ish, they're doing their thing for the most part. I yeah. mean, you just need to be spending time out there, mm -hmm. but in contrast, the time frame we're in right now, the end of October in the first week of November or the first four or five days of November, it can, it can be pretty dang slow if mm -hmm. it's warm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Especially if it's warm. The, the best, um, the best span I've ever had in late October was that, th uh, I guess it was three days, but two days back to back. There was a day before, but, uh, it was like that was like the 27th and I think it was the 29th and 30th, but it was in 2018 where yep. like Ted and I had found that spot on, I think the 27th, it was crazy in there then. And then when we went back the next two times, it was crazier and then crazier yet. And I think that's just a result of, and we've talked about this at length for years now, you and I, at least in just, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversations about it. It's, it's like, Early in November or late October, if you find that first hot dough, it can be the craziest. But it's like, I mean, truthfully, one out of every five, six years even bump into that. And that's with us covering tons of ground in those days too. Oh, yeah. Too. I mean, we've seen 30-plus different does probably in the last three days. And between, basically between, you know, driving in and out of the hunting area and deer walking in front of the truck in the morning and, or while we're hunting we've probably seen 30 plus different does and we've seen rutting activity on one of them really 
Yep. Where we were driving out a couple nights ago and a doe and a fawn ran across in front of Hayden's truck and a buck was behind Trailing. her. Trailing. <laughs> yep. And then right up the road, there was four more bucks that were just, they were sparring and, you know, rubbing and carrying on, but they were all right there in a wad, mm -hmm. you know, this like a handful of bucks right there. And then all the other deer we're seeing are just does yeah. like doe groups or lone does. And they're just doing their thing as they normally would. But that, that's kind of when you think about it, what you expect during this last week of October, you know, if you got 10 does and 10 adult does, one of them may be coming in or getting ready to come in right now. Yeah. Whereas five or six of them are going to be getting ready to come in in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then so. that's when you, that's when you're out there on November 13th and all of a sudden all hell breaks loose and there's deer yeah. literally running everywhere. Like it's yep. just, it's crazy how that works and you can either really be in it or you can really be out of it. And I feel that that's just, man, every year you got to, you got to fight through those days that are slow and just keep yourself moving and motivated knowing that all of a sudden you're probably going to find that spot that's hot. But it's like, if you get discouraged, it's easy to, I don't know, get complacent and just be like, well, I'll just wait here. And I think back to oh, like, yeah. I remember, uh, one day or a couple of days back in like 2016, you and I had hunted together and I had missed that one. And I think even before that we had some good hunts where we like, you remember the one where we bumped the buck with the doe and he came, we were like sitting there deciding if we should set up or not. And he came back around to us. Yeah. Trying to find his doe. And we were like, Oh, she, maybe we should have set up. And he actually ended up coming right. back another time. At yeah, last blowing life. at us mm -hmm. and everything else. He just didn't want to leave that area. Cause he, he didn't find her and mm -hmm. he knew she was in there somewhere. But we had had like a few good hunts and it felt like things were ramping up. And then I hunted with Corey for a couple of days and that would have been even right in the middle of the month. And we just weren't in the action. I remember setting up one day pretty much all day or if not all day and seeing like nothing. And I look back on that hunt and it's like, man, pretty early, we should have just used our instinct to say, this isn't hot. Let's keep moving. You know, and it might've been a 400 yard move for all we know. And then you could have been in them. But it's like, I remember the days when I was you know, high school, college, even Midwest whitetail. It really wasn't until 17, 18 seasons when I feel like we really started to move around more during the rut and just like put ourselves in the action more consistently. And that's, it's been a fun thing to learn because I guess, yeah, when, when we were all younger, I don't think we did it nearly as much. I know I didn't. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Just if you're if you're struggling for f days and days on end, we, we find success in the rut by just moving, mm -hmm. just picking a different spot on the map. Even yeah. it's like, well, I've been hunting this one river bottom for a week, and it's tore up with sign, and I saw a big buck in here a week ago, <laughs> but I haven't seen anything since, uh, and I'm starting to get burnt out. It's like just take a breath, go to sleep one night, get caught up on your your rest a little bit and then go try something completely new the next day. And that's usually when we find them and we kill them. Yeah. Yeah. It is crazy. The, the great example is, um, when Jake shot the one in 2021, it was his yep. birthday. We had been editing the day before edited that morning. And then he's like about 11 o'clock. He's like, you want to go hunting? I'm like, Oh yeah. So we went out and in a spot that we hadn't, I mean, it was across the, the water from where we had been hunting we ended up spotting a buck and going right up there and getting him. And it was like the whole mentality of that day was just sharp. It felt clear. We got sleep, you know, we'd taken a break. And I mean, not to sit here and say that every two days you should be, you know, sleeping in. I mean, if you want to, I, I <laughs> there ain't no rules, but it's like, if you're feeling tired, which I know I get to that point and my mental game starts slacking. It's like, I just am not thinking clearly and the old reset's a healthy thing. Oh Yeah. Real healthy, especially when you're dealing with the rut. Everybody's always waiting and waiting for that to get this to be this time of year. And then once it gets into the rut, it's like, well, you in reality, you really you don't have just a week. Mm -hmm. You have a month. twenty some days yeah. a month uh -huh. to deal with these things when they're in their breeding season. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, if you, if you go all day long for three or four days in a row of that, of that, you know, month time span, you'll wear yourself out real quick. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, we're getting to that point. I'm, I'm about to go hunting with Jake here for mule deer for the first, well, it'll be the first rifle mule deer hunt. I'm pretty excited about that. I'm going to try to wrap up this podcast and stuff and go do a little glass in here before season and Jake's been shooting a rifle. We're out. We're good out to probably out. like eighteen hundred yards <laughs> <Yeah>. or so, <something. laughs> further than hopefully. Y'all we be ever. slinging lead out there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That'll be good. I'm feeling pretty good about it. We've seen some big bucks in that area before, so Sweet. we'll see. At the very least, I'm sure Jake will shoot at something. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. I'm gonna hit the quick reset here tonight, and then me and Hayden are gonna get after her strong here for the next week. Awesome. So well, I'll let you know. I'll be letting you know as well. Thanks for your All time right. and good luck out there. See you, brother. See ya. <laughs>